And we thank you, God, for waking us up this morning with a mind stayed on you, God. We're so eternally grateful, Lord, that you're even mindful of us, Lord, realizing that our righteousness is but fifty rags before your righteousness. We ask, God, that you forgive anything that we have said or thought was not like you, God, as we forgive those who have done said and thought things against us, Lord God, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, Lord Father God. And we thank you, God, for allowing us not only to hear your word, Lord, uh, but allow us to be doers of your word, Lord Father God. We ask God that you bless those that join uh, via Zoom and via Facebook Live, Lord Father God. Allow us to hide this word to be down in our hearts, Lord, and uh, bless Bishop Parks, Lord Father God, as he partakes and, and breaks this word uh, for us, Lord Father God, and rightly divides it, Lord. And we ask these blessings and all other blessings under the authority and power given unto us by Christ Jesus. We say amen, 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 and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Weston, for such a wonderful prayer. Pastor Weston, I know you did it last week, but we got some new people uh, here this week, and we got some that probably didn't capture your YouTube channel. Could you go ahead and put that in the chat again? And I want to encourage all of you, Pastor Weston, he's a young pastor, but he's a powerful pastor. He's a powerful, has a powerful word. And I want him to put that in the chat. And if you could copy that link, amen, and tune in to his YouTube channel and be a blessing to his ministry, because the more you like his post, the farther they send it to people that other people that need to hear it, but also it, you receive a blessing, amen, that the word of God is quick and powerful. And sometimes it just takes one word and God, God, God is not particular about who he wants to give that word to other than the fact that is someone who wants to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And Pastor Weston has committed himself to that. All right. So Pastor Weston, there you go. You all, y'all, if you don't know how to use the chat, it's right at the bottom of the screen. It says chat. He put the link in. Amen. And so let, let's support him. And also, amen. You just never know. One word can change your whole life. One, the voice of God, we were preaching about Sunday, not a scripture so that you can be a biblical scholar that quote a scripture, what's the use of quoting a scripture and don't know what it means? It's about the voice of God. What did that, what did it say to me? And when it says to you, as Pastor Wood was here, he would say these words, don't just be a hearer, be a doer also. So let's get into this, the power of God's grace. Tina Diaz, good to see you. Amen. Sister Marcia Jones, Sister Doris Tita coming. There's more people coming in. But the power of God's grace. This is what we're going to deal with tonight. Now, I want you to strap yourself down, Sister Sharon Lewis, because we're getting ready to go Star Trekking tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I grew up watching Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek, Star Trek. It's, I call it Star Trek, even though it's spelled T-R-E-K. I guess the correct pronunciation is Star Trek. But in any regards, and they would say, go where no man has gone before. Not that I'm the only preacher who's gone in before, but we got to go in this setting, in this venue, to really understand the power of God's grace. Now, this Bible study is intended to expand your on your thinking on God's grace. We've been led to believe that God's grace is unmerited favor, that that's that's been in the Sunday books. I grew up reading it. Sunday books today still talk about God's grace as being unmerited favor. In that context, we're told that God grants us favor that we don't deserve. That unmerited favor means God grants us favor that we don't deserve. Now, where, whereas that context is true, God does always give us things that we don't deserve. Uh, it's not truth. God's grace is not unmerited favor. In the general scheme of things, and you can sum it all up by God gave us something that we didn't deserve, but that's not the, the, the root meaning of the word grace. So the revelation of the context of grace causes us to forfeit the power because we have been told that it's unmerited favor. It is favor, right? Then we have, we have, it has caused us, uh, uh, Hilda, to forfeit some of the power of God's grace. We make grace sound like magic dust that 
that God sprinkles on us to forgive us of our sins and give us things for free that we don't deserve. Then we become Christians and not saints. Now I know that's, that's a strange word to some of us because many of us probably wear the badge of Christian, uh, but God called us to be more than a Christian. He called us to be saints. The word Christian name Christian came out of the book of Acts where they were laughing at the people who followed Jesus and said, since you act like him, we're going to give you all the name of Christians. And that's since the old church didn't have the tools that we have today, we took that label and we wear it proudly. And I said, it's okay to be a Christian when you start, but somewhere, Sister Lewis, we have to become a saint. So that's what God called us to be, a saint. And the reason why we keep in that, that context of Christian is because we got this unmerited favor going on. So let's let's turn quickly to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and we're going to look at the second verse. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and the second verse. And let's see what see what Paul says that we what, what God intends for us. There's a transition. Uh, and God is trying to get us somewhere. Well, ultimately, uh, Pastor Weston has taught this. He's ultimately trying to get us to be a son of God. All right, but but we can't. We have to grow in grace, and we're gonna find out what that means. And in the knowledge, First Corinthians, the first chapter. I don't know why it's taking me my book so long to get to these pages. First Corinthians, the first chapter, and I'm gonna lift up the second verse. All right, First Corinthians, the first chapter. I want you to get this. All right, this is Michelle Turner, it's Elder Goldsberry. Good to see you. Watch this. He says, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified, that means set apart in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. We are called to be saints. Paul didn't ever call, he never called anybody a Christian. He said, we are called to be saints. That means we have to, we have to evolve and elevate with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So therefore, he says, if you call upon the name of Jesus Christ and consider him to be the Lord, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, then the way God sees us is that we are saints. We're called to be saints. So our misinterpretation of grace makes God our supply of needs like Amazon.com. We give him tithes and offerings, and then we place an order, and this shows up to the front door, right? And this perspective is partly due to many confusing God's goodness with God's grace. See, we, we God is good, and his mercy endureth forever. But God's goodness is not God's grace. We're going to talk about that. Uh, God's goodness is not God's grace. The perspective is partly due to many confusing God's good news. We say God will do it, right? God will do it. That's God's goodness. The real revelation is that our Heavenly Father has already done it with grace. See, it's not that God will do it. God has already done it. Hello, somebody. I wish I was in church because uh, Sister Cheryl Mass, I would tell somebody to touch a neighbor and tell them God has already done it, right? So, so we confuse God's goodness with God's grace. He gave us the power to do it. When did he do it? When Jesus the Christ, before he became Christ Jesus, hung on the cross, out of the seven scriptures from the Old Testament, and then died and got up, guess what? He gave us something special. And that's what we're going to talk about. And what he gave us was grace, all right? And now that we have grace, we have the opportunity to do all things. And what God does is strengthen us. It's not that God does anything. What God does is give us strength, give us wisdom. If you say, some of us are missing out on blessings because we're waiting on things for God to do that God already done. As if God's gonna show up like the Amazon truck in the front yard Instead of realizing that God already showed up, he showed up in, in, the, in, in, the, in the identity of Jesus Christ. He died, and when he got up, 
He said, all powers in, in heaven is in my hands. And then he gave his disciples commission to go teach them everything that he taught them. Let's go to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Let's see what, 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 what he said. Is he going to do it? Won't he do it? He will do some things, but he's not going to work for us. Uh, he's not going to work for us. Brother Malcolm Lewis, good to see you. He's not going to work for us. We do the work. We do the work. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Let's see what the Bible has to say about this. Philippians, the fourth chapter, and the 12th and the 13th verse. Here we go. Here we go. Are y'all ready? Here was he said. He says, Paul says, I know both how to be abased. It means I, I know how to be minimized. I have not, little or nothing. And I know how to be abound. I know how to be on the bottom. And I know how to be on top. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. I know to have a lot. I, I know what it feels like to have nothing. Both to abound and to suffer need. That means I know how to go lacking things and wanting things and not have yet received it. Verse 13. Here we go, Sister Michelle Turner. He said, but I can do all things through Christ. Now see, some people, some people, uh, Melina, they put a period right there. I can do all things through Christ. They said period. But look at this, Sister Hooks. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that in itself is a perfect lead in to grace. See, God will do it. What God will do is he'll give us the strength to do it. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And strength can come in the form of physical strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength. He'll strengthen us in the area to address whatever we are needing to be addressed. But then we have to do the thing, right? He, he gives us the strength and the capacity the capability that we need, but we have to do the thing. All right. Hope y'all still mm -hmm. here with me. So there is a difference between God's goodness and God's grace. God is good. I've said that, Jana, and his mercy endureth forever to everybody. Everybody, God is good. God is good to everybody. All right. The word good. Brother Keith Miller, in Hebrew, is tov, is T-O-V. And what it means is fulfill the purpose, right? And what, what purpose is God fulfilling? The purpose he gave us in Genesis, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish her. That's the purpose of man. So when we say God is good, that means he fulfilled every purpose that he stated in Genesis 1 and 2 and 3, Right? God, God is not creating new grass. Grass already been pre He's not creating a new kind of water. God, God is not creating new kind of trees. We discover new trees, but the tree was already there. So God fulfills the purpose. So if you look at Psalms 136 and 1, here's what it says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he fulfills every purpose, and his love lasts forever. See, God makes his... That's why... The, that's why that's why, Sister Carletta Miller, that the neighbor next door to us that don't go to church drive the same kind of car, <laughs> live in the same kind of house, don't pray, don't read no Bible, don't show up to Bible study, because God has to forget, forget, fulfill his purpose, right? And his purpose was laid out in Genesis. And his love don't stop, even though we say, oh, those people are just really, their lives are terrible. There's some terrible people, but that doesn't mean God don't love them. Because God loved us when we terrible. Matter of fact, God loved us when we was real terrible. When we was doing all kinds of wild and crazy things and making all kinds of bad choices. He didn't stop loving us. Because he has to, that's part of his purpose. He created us to love for him, for us to love him, but also for him to express his love. Now I want you to write this down, everybody. God's goodness is for everyone, but not everyone has grace. All right. Don't you get this? Don't you get this? So, Anola, God's goodness is to everybody. 
He reigns on the just and the unjust. He, he fulfills that purpose. He's not going to let it rain in your yard and every other house on your street be dry. He's not going to do that. He gives everybody uh, our tans. Everybody gets God's goodness, but everybody don't get God's grace. All right. So, so Bishop Paul, you got to talk to me because I thought we all was children of God. You're going to find out. No, you're not. Everybody's not a child of God. Now, everybody's not a God created living beings, but every living being is not a child of God. You know, we all children of God. That ain't what the Bible said. We're going to, I'm going to show you the scripture. I know I'm talking, I'm talking strange language, but it's in the Bible. We said, we all are God's children. If you're a believer, you're a child of God. But if you are not a believer, you're just a living being. You, you, God, he, he wanted beings. He created things. He created living things. That's, you know, things that re require water. This big old elephant ear tree sitting up in my living room. I, I, I love the tree, but I got to water it. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it, is, it needs water. It needs sun to live. It don't need food. Then he created living beings. So everybody receives God's goodness, but everybody is not God's creation. Let's go to Ephesians 2. As, let's look at the eighth verse. Ephesians 2, verse 8. Everybody, Melina, gets God's goodness. He rains on everybody. It snows on everybody. Everybody die, right? Everybody die. They, God, that's God's good. He fulfills that purpose. But grace is not for everybody. Ephesians 2, the 8th chapter, and the tenth, through the 10th verse. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Some powerful words in there. First of all, great, we are only eligible for grace by faith. And when we have that faith, Romans 10 and 9, to confess that Christ died and that God raised him from the dead, then we are saved, rescued from the penalty of sin, right? It, it ain't nothing we can work. We didn't work to get it. That's why sometimes good people never get born again because they're a good person. They think just because they work in the church, they say, I work in the church. Well, working in the church don't mean that you have been rescued from the penalty of sin because you have to believe that God raised Christ from the dead. He says, Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's why some people boasting about all the great things they do. Then realize that the great things that you do is only because that God has uh, given us the capability through grace. All right. So, so we can only receive salvation by grace. Right. We are not saved. We are saved not because the Lord is good, but because God granted something special to us, the believers. Grace, Tina Diaz, is only eligible for those who believe. If you don't believe, you ain't saved. If you ain't saved, there is no grace. All right? So we must understand this word grace. It said by grace, by Marcia, by grace we are saved. By grace. What, what is this? It ain't unmerited favor, it, but it's something else. And because we think it's unmerited favor, which is true, but it's not truth, then we sit back and do nothing and think, well, I, I, I gave my petition to God and God going to do it. And 20 years later, it still hasn't happened. Now we're frustrated saint Christians sitting in the pew. Paul, Apostle Paul told the Ephesians, we're saved by grace. We just read it, Ephesians 2 and 8. Paul spoke several languages, but his native language was Aramaic. Paul was a, spoke Aramaic because he was out of the tribe of Benjamin. And somewhere, uh, Hebrew, the Hebrew uh, nation kind of got with the Arabs, Syrians, and became Aramaic. And Jesus spoke Aramaic. That's why when you see his words in red, he's speaking in Aramaic. The Greek couldn't tr translate Eli, Eli, Sabbatani, so they just left it like it was. But he was speaking in Aramaic. He also spoke Kion Greek because he was a Roman soldier. 
So during Paul's time, he traveled to Europe and Asia. That's where he went. He visited Athens, Greece, but he never lived there. So we miss the context if we understand grace according to the Greek, the Greek word, charis. Charis means favor. If we look at it, and, and that's the Greek Bible took the Hebrew, took the Hebrew, the Aramaic, the Bible is written in Hebrew and Aramaic, took the Hebrew and Aramaic, and didn't have a word for it, said that, said, well, it's charis, it means it's favor. All right, uh, let me give you this little biblical history. The original text of the Bible is written in Hebrew and Aramaic. The Torah was translated to Keon Greek by Jews. Jews wrote the Keon Greek by in the third century BCE and later more Greek printed the Torah in 1537. So everybody was walking around with these, these scrolls that was being written by scribes in Hebrew and Aramaic. And then the Greek came along and said, we're going to translate this into a Greek manuscript in 1537 and then in uh, the Greek printed the, the New Testament in 1638 and King James Bible which was English was published in 1611 so everybody printed up Bibles King James, the Greek, the Latins, right? The Greek context is how we have fallen short of the glory of God Paul spoke from the, the Aramaic context he lived from 4 BCE to 64 AD Jesus died in 30 AD. So we got to look at this from the Aramaic context. So let's do this. I told you the Greek word for grace is charis, C-H-A-R-I-S. It means favor, freely given. But grace, listen to this, Jerry Patton, but grace from the Aramaic context is tabata, T-I-B-O-T-A. And it means adoption. Oh my God. What? You you mean, no, Bishop Paul, you, you, are you trying to tell me that the word grace from the Aramaic context means that God adopted us? So when you see grace, which is translated from the Greek text to the English text, it really means that by adoption we have been saved. <laughs> Look, by adoption, God adopted us. He saved us because he adopted us. He could not create, he could not produce us because he's a spirit, Sister Lewis. He's a spirit. He can't have children. But what he did was he created living beings and those that believed in him, he adopted us into his family. All right. Y'all y'all got all your mutes on, so I can't hear no noise, but that's all right. We're going to keep on going here. Listen to what he said. So Tabata, T-I-B-O-T-A, means adoption or granted access. So so here we go. Here we go, Sister Turner, Michelle Turner. When you see grace, by grace we are saved. By, by adoption, God granted us access. You got that, Tina? God adopted us. He gave us access to who? To him. Because when Adam fell, man could, did not have access to God. So God had to find some me, a man that he could trust and then give him access. And God talked to the prophet and the prophet talked to the people. Before Jesus Christ, couldn't nobody talk to God but the people that God handpicked who were flawed, but they were not flawed in their belief. And God adopted them. Now, because of Christ Jesus, we all have the opportunity to be adopted and be granted access to God. See? See, back then, Sister Lewis, back in the Old Testament, Brother Lewis, Malcolm Lewis, y'all both in the same room, in the same house. I want y'all to get this together. Watch this. In the Old Testament, if you wanted to talk to God, you talked to the priest, and the priest talked to God. Because God said, can't nobody have access to me other than the people he chose. Well, the Catholic Church missed the boat. They still think that you go in that little, that little room that looked like a closet, and you sit there with a the little window, and there's a priest on the other side. And you com you confess your sins to the priest, and then the priest say you're forgiven. Go do 23 Hail Marys, and you'll be forgiven. And I'll go pray for you. Well, because of Jesus the Christ, God brought grace, which means God said, now anybody that believes will be adopted into His family. All right. So let's go to Ephesians. We we'll go back to Ephesians. Well, we're in Ephesians. We're in the second chapter. Let's just back up to the first verse. 
There we go. First Ephesians 1 and 5. Are y'all ready? Here we go. Brother Malcolm Lewis, here we go. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. There it is. There it is. Sister Patricia Miller, he said, God created living beings, but grace is, now he said, but I'm going to adopt those as children who believe in Jesus Christ. Having predestined us into his adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. That means God figured out how he wanted to do it, how he was going to bring us into his family. And since he could not produce us, he could cre create us. He said, if you believe Jesus, who is God, then God now adopts us into his family. And that's what grace is. It, grace, Tabata, means adoption. Granted, access to God. We now have access. We go to people and say, will you pray for me? And that's fine, but it ain't fine. What we should go and say, can you touch and agree with me? Because you need to, if you, if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, believer of God through Jesus Christ, then God says we are already adopted. And since we're adopted, we don't need a middleman. The prayer in the church should be a, should be a prayer of agreement. I'm a, I'm praying agreement. It should be. It should be. Sometimes we go all the way in. My, my, my little brother would say we press our way in. It sounds real good. I call it poetic praying. It sounds real good. And words be coming together. We bow, head bowed, knee bent, body bowed, like an empty cup before a full. Oh, boy, that sounds so good. But they ain't got nothing to do with me. Who are you praying for, preacher? And everybody getting all excited. And we walk to the seats and said, well, now we're going to leave it at the altar. Take your burden to the Lord and leave them there. It means take them to the Lord, not take them to the front of the church. All right. So, so it says, it says, we, so then we are saved by, but let's go back to Ephesians 2 and 8. Ephesians 2, 8, 2 and 8. It says, for by grace, we are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So let me translate this, Kathy Wood. For by adoption, we are saved through faith. Pastor Weston know what faith is. It's imuna, steadfast loyalty or supporting God and not ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God adopted us as his children. That's grace. He is a spirit and cannot have children. So he adopted or granted us access to him as children and believers, all right? Therefore, everyone is God's creation as a living being, but everyone is not a child of God. Every living being is God's creation, created in his image and in his likeness. But every living being is not a child of God because we just read it in Ephesians 1 that you gotta be adopted through Jesus Christ. Yeah, if any man be in Christ, Sister Gail Crozier, he's a new creature, right? If you're not in Christ, you're an old man. And God don't have nothing to do with the old man because the old man is fleshy. God don't deal with only prayer. People say God won't hear a sinner prayer. That is incorrect. God will hear a sinner prayer. Here it is. I believe. That's it. When it's with a sinner, that's how we got saved. When we say, I believe, God hears you, right? And well, I, I don't know what was going on with me. Uh, I was living a wild life. I'm not talking about Bishop Paul. I'm just talking in general for somebody to go around and put a put a put a put a comment somewhere in somebody's messenger. Uh, I was doing all that crazy stuff. You know what? You know why God didn't deal with you in the, uh, correctly and appropriately? It's because somebody who's in the family adopted into the family that was a believer was praying for you and prayed for me and prayed for us. Until we came into the knowledge that we need to have more than the streets. We need to have God in our lives. And those prayers, not because of us, because the person who prayed was close to God. God heard their prayer. And because he loved us and we're in his family, then he reached out and protected us 
waiting for the moment for us to give our life to him. All right. So grace is that God, through Christ Jesus, adopted us. Tabita. Tabita. T-I-B-O-T-A. It means adoption, admission. It means granted access. All right. And because we're granted access, we become his children. And children, I think some of y'all got children. A lot of you have children. Listen to this. Children always have access to their parents or parent. Children, oh, if they call you, even if you're mad, you're going to answer the phone. You may lay them out first 15 minutes, then you're going to say what you want. A child will always have access, but you do not give a stranger access to you. Somebody meets you on the street, you don't know them, say, can I talk to you? You, you start grabbing for your purse, something in your purse. I don't know what's in there. You start grabbing for your phone because I don't know you. You don't talk to me when I don't know you uh, unless you look like you're okay, but I'm still cautious. But a child in the family can stop you anywhere. Isn't that right, Melina? Stop you anywhere. You got a question, Melina? No, I'm listening. Okay. So, so, here's, the, so here's the thing. Children are always given, but strangers, as, as his children, we operate under his power. All right? We operate on his power. Grace means, the word tabita means adoption, right? And grant, he grants us access. And when he grants us access, the access to God gives us power and an ability to operate through us because he has granted us access to him. So when he adopts us, it gives us access to him. And because we have access to him, then he can operate his power through us, right? So, so that he can accomplish through us what he wants to accomplish. What Paul says makes sense in 1 Corinthians 12 and 9. Let, let's go over to Chris, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12 and 9. When you read it, man, me a poetic preaching, you're gonna make this. Go a whole lot of ways. This sounds good. But at the end of the day, what does it mean? He said, he said, my grace is sufficient. Somebody heard the words that and said, amazing grace. I'll sweep the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. What did Paul say in 1 Corinthians 12 and 8? Look at this. Listen to this, Artanza. Am I in the right place? First Corinthians, I mean, second, I'm sorry, second Corinthians 12 and 9. Second Corinthians 12 and 9. Let's get this right quick. It makes sense when you read it under the context that grace is not unmerited favor, which is true in a general sense, but it's not truth. The truth is we're now adopted, our tangent. God adopted you. The moment you said, I believe in Jesus Christ and confess it with your mouth and believe in your heart, right? That God raised Christ from the dead. God said, you know, I'm in my family. And since you're in my family, he says, now you have access to him. You have the ability to pray to him. You don't call Bishop Paul and say, Bishop Paul, uh, could you talk to God for me? You have access to talk to, to him through Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Very familiar scripture. Paul said, you know, I got this thorn in my flesh and I went to God and asked God three times to take it because the messenger of the devil is beating me up. He said, he said, Satan. He said, not the thorn. The thorn was a messenger everywhere Paul went. He had opposition, he had enemies, and they were just beating him up. They stoned him. He was in a ship. Every time he turned around, he, he had to have seen, uh, heard the voice of Christ because who would go through all of that unless they were insane, right? He, I mean, he said, I've been through all of this, and I went to God and tell, asking God, get this devil off of me. And here's what verse 8 says, verse 9 says, and he said unto me, oh, here we go. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Now, I've, I've studied that and I've messed it up more times than I needed to until the revelation of what it means comes. We're going to translate this. this he, says, he says, so most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Here we go. That the power of Christ rest on me. So let, what, what is God saying here? What, what is he saying? He's saying, he's saying, he said, my grace. God, Paul, God said to him, that granted access through adoption. Uh -huh, Paul, you're part of the family. It's sufficient for you. That your strength is made perfect when you're weak. Because God grants access to, 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 to us when we're weak. Because we don't, most people don't pray when they're strong. They go to God crying when they what? In trouble. He said, but most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In other words, God releases his power to us when we grant access to him. So God said, you don't need to worry about the, about the messenger buffeting you, beating you up. He said, you in my family. <laughs> That's what God is saying. So it's the Lord. God has said, we're in his family. You ain't got to worry about the devil. See, see, I don't know about y'all, but see, I, I, I take it personal when people, uh, now sometimes my family members have gotten themselves in some trouble, but I take it very personal when somebody offends them or hurt them and they didn't do nothing. So God is saying, you don't have to worry about the messenger of Satan who's trying to beat you up. He's going to say, Paul, your adoption gives you access to him. And when we have access to God, guess what God does, Tina? The ass, then God grants us power to deal with it. Power to endure, power to overcome, power to get around it, power to go over it. Let's read it again. Chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, my adoption, the granted access is sufficient. God said, all you need is access to him. That's why Paul was able to endure and come out of everything. Paul really didn't have to go to Rome. Bonham said, I'm not going because they're going to kill you. But Paul looked like he wanted to die because everybody else said, we ain't going. Because <laughs> if you go to Rome, they're going to kill you. And then Paul just said, well, here's the way I see it. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And they said, you crazy. And you can go on to Rome and die, but we're going to go on and take the gospel somewhere else. All right? So the power of God is released because we are granted access. Now, too many Christians, our problem is that too many of us are trying to reach our goals and aspirations operating out of our own strength. Instead of relying on God's power and leading to get, them, get us to where we should be going with him. We're relying upon our own wisdom, our knowledge, our intelligence, and our strength. Right? That's what we rely upon. We rely upon the 12 steps to faith. We rely upon affirmations. You know, people, I got a, a friend of mine, and she said, I, I, every day I get up, I say my affirmation. I say, well, is, uh, are you talking to God? Well, you know, I tell myself I, I'm rich, I'm prosperous, I'm, I'm wealthy. And they told me if I keep saying it, that the law of attraction will make that happen for me. I said, well, God's like this. If you don't do it his way, it ain't happening. And if, if it does happen and the devil give it to you, it's a string attached to it. He lets you get up so he can pull the string and you fall in front of everybody, embarrass yourself and embarrass God. See, so so. So we trying to listen to the world, the world, right? Don't conform to the world. Let's listen to all the We're conforming to the world and not transforming by the repairing of our mind. God only wants one thing. Do it his way. He said, seek first the kingdom. What's the kingdom? His authority and power and his righteousness, which means his way of doing things and everything. Oh, he said, the rest of it is going to be added. All right. So so our dilemma is we're trying to use techniques instead of understanding the way God wants to do it. He wants us to believe right, in Christ Jesus. Then he ad grace. He adopts us into his family. And when we become part of his family as a believer, then Sister Michelle Turner, he works through us by giving us power. So when we are weak, he we find his strength. That's what Paul just said. 
He said, my God said, his strength is made complete in our weakness. So Paul says, since now I got this secret that nobody else has got. Paul got a secret that the other prophets and disciples and apostles didn't have. He says, so he says, so when I'm weak because I'm adopted into God's family, God then puts gives his power to rest on me. So he said, I'd rather go ahead on and have this, this trouble knowing that God is going to give me his power to endure all of this. All right. Now, so grace is what? Dina, Tabota. It means what? Adoption. It means granted access. So point number two, the worse the world gets, the greater the access to God. Now that make, does that make sense? I know the worse your trouble become, the greater the access to God. The worse situations are around you, with things trying to get you, overtake you, overpower you, depress, oppress, suppress, the greater God gives you access. All right? That's why to whom much is given much. Yes. Bishop. Yes. And can along with that, could it also be that when we're going through that, that we, we, we tend to pray more when we got struggles going on with us? Some of us tend to like be on our knees almost nonstop. We going through our troubled waters like that. But whereas other times when things are okay, we, <coughs> we find ourselves praying a little less. Well, see, that, that's a great point. Here's, here's what I would say to that. The praying part doesn't matter if we don't believe. Mm -hmm. Right? But if we pray and believe, the more we pray, the more access he gives us. Because God's looking at, do they believe me? Yes, come on, give me, let me give you more. The more we believe, Paul... Paul was no greater than the rest of us other than his education. And, you know, he was sent on the feet of Gamal. But what Paul had, Abraham had, uh, Joseph had, they, they really believed. They were, they had dysfunctional families. They had wrecked lives. <laughs> they did some crazy things. But if you read the Bible, one thing they had, they believed and obeyed. And when they did that, God gave them access and then he gave them power. Right. So when we pray, when we when we're weak, that's what we just read. Right. That's a good point. Paul said, said when I'm when I'm having infirmities, God. Right. I feel weak. God gives me power. So Paul says then I'd rather go forget about the devil messing with me. I'd rather have the power. You yeah. see what happens? So so because you believe on Ola and the rest of us on, on, on Zoom tonight and Facebook, because we believe. God gives us grace. He adopts us into his family. His, his family through blood. We are, we are part of his blood family. What you mean, Bishop Paul? Jesus shed his blood and made, right? His blood made, God is a spirit, right? So he couldn't bleed as a spirit, as a creator, but man had to bleed. And when that, that, that tied us into the blood relationship. Everything God did from, from Adam fall was blood related uh, uh, by the shedding of blood. Whether well, it was an animal, God used blood. So he wanted a family, a natural family and they, that he could adopt and the blood connects us. So when we come to him believing, the more, the greater the hardship, the more we should believe. The more we believe since we're in his family, guess what he does? the more power he gives us. He does not solve the problem. He gives us power to go through the problem. Let me give you an example. David said, though I walk through the valley of shadows of death, the Lord gets me out. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Did I quote that right? Oh, I'm sorry. Though I walk through the valley of shadows of death, the Lord hides me under the rock. Oh, I must be. I must have read that out the wrong Bible. Oh, okay. I got it right now. Here, here we go. Though I walk through the valley of shadows of death, the Lord is with me. He don't get me out of the valley. I got to what? Walk out. But while I'm in the valley, the power of God is what? With me. Guess where that table is prepared? Deacon Jerome Wood. That table wasn't prepared when, on the other end of the valley. The table prepared in the valley. God know how to bless you in dry places. God know how to bless you when you're catching hell. We, some of us have caught hell and still was getting promoted on the job. 
Someone was catching hell and, and, and name was getting elevated in the community. And we said, Lord, I'm about to lose my mind. And God's still elevating us because God does not get us out of stuff. God gives us the power for us to get out of it. So when we pray on all of what God does, he said, since you have been, been adopted into his family and granted access, and, and he does to us what we do with our family, like a, a good father would do. You ain't messing with my son. You mess with my son, you got to mess with me. Except daddy will fight. God don't fight. Well, God doesn't say more power. Let's go to Romans 5 and 20, because that'll, that'll, that'll help explain a little bit better. That was great on all of with the more we pray means we're doing it what? God's way. Everybody don't pray. Some people call a family. Some people call, I need my faith partners to come over here and, and talk, help me think this thing out. <laughs> I need my faith partners. Those that know the word. I, we never said this in Tennessee, but when I came to Winston-Salem, I heard him say this. Those that know the word of prayer, pray my strength in the Lord. You, you, I can't pray your strength in the Lord. I can pray that the Lord deliver you got to you got to do it God's way. I can't I can't I can't pray and God hear me when you ain't doing it his way. You ain't praying at all, but you want me to pray. Or oh, you're a bishop. And <laughs> I still sin and fall short of the glory. God gives me power to do his assignment. But guess what? When I get through doing his assignment, I'm just another man. The anointing of God that destroys yoke has nothing to do about me personally. If I go out and buy a limousine that costs three hundred thousand dollars and see a, a note, uh, three thousand dollars a month car note, and say, "Ah, right, God gonna fix that for me," I can't say that when he come with the record of tow that limousine out of my front yard because I didn't do it God's way. Okay, let's get to Romans five and twenty. Here we go. Here we go, Anola. Get this. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Because the law was only to show us how bad we would off with God. That's all the law did. It didn't, it didn't make us better. God knew we couldn't do it. But in the book of Numbers, he asked, can you do, can you, can you obey the law? And those people, because they were all puffed up, said, yeah, we can do it. And God said, okay, now I'm going to put this law on you. He says, the law in it that the offense might abound. But where sin abound, wait a minute, where sin abound, grace did what? Much more abound. That means God said, the worse this world gets, the greater access we have to him. It can't get so bad that we can't go to God. Noah had found grace, right? He had access to God, right? And God talked to him and said, build me a ship. And because he built the ship, the power of God gave him the strength to build an ark that was like a, like a big Navy vessel. Right. And then God, because he was adopted into God's family, everybody on the planet died except him and his three sons and three wives and his wife. All right, let's keep reading. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace, access to God, reign through righteousness. And an all of righteousness means doing it God's way unto eternal life. By Christ. In other words, you do it God's way until you have eternal life. So the harder it gets, God opens up his access. They, they used to say it this way, little prayer, little power. Some prayer, some power, much prayer, much power. What does that mean? When I, I have now access to God, when God gives me a word, gives the spirit gives me a, a revelation and I do it his way, then God opens up access to, to us greater. The access is based upon righteousness doing his way. All right. So I know it's not the prayer it is I pray God. I sit in church and God gives me a revelation when I'm reading the Bible. You know, I, that, that's for me right there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to do that right there. And when I do it, God said more access. So, so the devil, the devil, uh, Brother Malcolm Lewis, Want us to be ignorant about God's word. You know why? Because it's God's word that gives us access. So if I was the devil, thank God I'm not, I would make sure that people would stay as ignorant as possible. Because the more word they got, the more word they can speak in the air. God said, wait a minute. That's what I said. God said, more access. The more word you have and the more you do what he say do, God says more access. It's just like when I know you, I stop. If I don't know you, I stop you at the front door. 
I don't know you. Well, I'm right. I'm a, I'm a Christian, but I still don't know you. What, what, what can I do for you? If I know you, I may let you sit in the family room, right? But I ain't, I ain't, I ain't taking you to, wait, can I sleep here tonight? No, you can't. <laughs> Cause I don't, I don't know you like that. I know you, but I don't know you like that. Well, I go to New Hope. Yeah, I, I don't even know where you live. So we can't be that close. But when you know somebody and you trust somebody and they ain't walking through your house, going in your deep freezer, pulling out chicken wings and frying chicken wings on your oven, right? Then you say, look, my home is your home. Because I know you're going to treat my home like your home. What is that saying? You're going to treat my home the right way. And that's what God, how God deals with us. The more we do it his way, believe, he lets us from the front porch into the living room. Then the more we, right, have access to him, a relationship with him, intimacy with him, you say, you know what? Come on, uh, dwell with me in the secret place of the Most High. We're going to get to that in a minute, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All right? So as we practice the righteousness of God, God, we are doing things the greater access to God. You, did that make sense on all of it? It's not about the praying, it's about the believing. Right. Yeah, and when we believe, the more we believe, the more we talk to him. And we learned that prayer is not supplication, asking for nothing. Prayer is, I want my thoughts to line up with his thoughts. Right. And the only way my thoughts can line up with his thoughts, I got to know what his thoughts are. He gave us 66 books of his thoughts. So I got to go look for his thoughts in this Bible on order. I got to line up my thoughts with his thoughts. Got to do what his thoughts say. And when I pray, I got to pray his thoughts in the atmosphere. God says access. The bigger the problem, the greater the access. That's what grace means. It means granted access. All right, let's keep going. That was great. Thank you, Arnold. I can always count on you. So here we go. Here we go, Arnold. Since you're talking back to me, we should come to God boldly. Why? Because our power cometh from God. Why? Because he granted us what? Access as being part of his family. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Y'all ain't asking no question. Aunt Ola, where is Denny Cash? Aunt Ola and Denny Cash ask questions. <laughs> I always count on them to the rest. I'm, I'm right here, and I was thinking about the question the whole time you've been talking, but I thought I might sound a little ignorant, but what I was thinking, because I'm, I'm listening, you know, with about grace and everything, but I'm thinking, why does God, is, is the omnipotent, the creator of everything, this is, he did this. Yes. Why would he create us to be something else? He did. You know, why aren't we just, you know, why aren't we perfect? The, the way he, I mean, I don't understand. Okay, that, that's such a great question. He puts a sin nature in us to make, you know, <coughs> Eve do, do what she did and Adam to sit back and watch. I mean. I don't get it. Okay, well, I'm glad you said it because that's why people, the Greek mistranslated the word grace, see? Because what God gave Adam was grace. God gave Adam access to him, right? He gave, God, the Bible said that God came looking for Adam. His voice was in the garden, he, which means he had a regular conversation with Adam. But here's what he did for us. He didn't create a sin nature. He created us to be just like him. But he gave us one thing that no other living thing, living being has a choice. A choice. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. So some people got a raggedy life, make real bad choices. Some people got a, you know, messed up life. Some people got a kind of messed up life. Some people like, I ain't never been through nothing yet. Because he gives, he did not want a creation that obeyed him because he programmed our mind. He wanted us to choose him. See, real, real love comes by choice, right? Amen. Now, 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 some people, some people love people because they give them things. <laughs> oh, he bought me a car. Right. Yeah, yeah. You caught him with a woman, but that's all right. You forgot about the woman because you saw the car. Oh, he pays. Ooh, I needed this man because boy, ooh, them bills was killing me. <laughs> the bills was killing me. Oh, so you married him because he got money to pay your bills and you take your money and do what you want to do. Or, I married, she just like my mama. So you wanted to have your mama to be 
in your house. So you want a woman like your mama. But watch this. True love comes by choice. And that choice has nothing to do with things. It has to do with the character of the person. And all God, Pastor Wilson, he got it. He started talking about it. All God wants us to do is show for us to, for him to show us his character, that he's consistent. He has the integrity. He does what he says. He loves us unconditionally and that we would then choose him and not choose the things of the world. You get that? And what we do is since we can't see him, not we, a lot of people, not everybody, we choose the things we can see. Same problem that they had with Israel in the, in the wilderness. Moses went up on the mountain for 40 days to talk to God. They said, where is Moses? He's been gone all this time. He ain't coming back. What we need to do is make our own God that we can touch and feel. Now, he up on the mountain. They see the sliding on the mountain, but the city rabbits couldn't realize that, wait a minute, what's 40 days? That ain't a long time. And they made a golden calf that they could worship because they could see the calf and they couldn't see God. And since God is a spirit, the only way you can worship him is spirit and truth. We want the things that we can see, right? And that's why people got crosses, you know, in their Bible. Now, this, 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 as long as this cross is in the Bible, Jesus is not on the cross no more. So why you got the cross, the Bible, that cross in the Bible, not going to protect you, but Christ will, you see? So we are cho people of choice. And what God wants us to do is by free will. He wants to adopt us into his family. That's grace. He, because he wants us to choose him freely. With no call. He don't want us running in because we don't got beat down in the streets. And I went, Lord, that's the only place I could go. Every, every place else is, that is the wrong. You may get in there like that, but once you get in there, you ought to say, oh my God, what have I been missing? I didn't realize that I'm part now of his family. And since I'm in his family, and I made the choice to serve him and not serve the world, he gives me power to deal with my issues. He gives me power to walk through the valley of shadows of death. He gives me power to be in prison for three years, Joseph, and, and then have favor in the prison. Does that make sense? Didn't it? It's all about choice. Choice brought sin in the world. Choice brought sin. Adam and Eve made a choice to disobey God. And when they did, sin entered the world. And the devil said, okay, now this world belongs to me. And he, it did. So God said, well, since the world belongs to Satan, God could not control. Uh, be, he's in charge of the world, but he couldn't deal with the events. Man was just doing his own thing. Man wasn't choosing him. So God had to rope himself in flesh, be God man, and take the world back through blood. A death. Somebody God got to die. knew that was going to happen. He, well, he knew, when he created yes, it, he knew it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. But that's why I said that he predestinated. He didn't predestinate. He don't, he don't decide who's going who gonna to go to heaven. He could see it, but that ain't what he want to see. He wants all men saved. I told him, he said, well, he know who's going to be saved. I said, well, what's he's going to church then? And let, tell me, am I going to heaven? Because if I'm not going to heaven, let me have some good, good time while I'm here. Because if I'm going to heaven, hell... After all of this and, and giving up all of that, what good is that? We, he set all this up in place because he knew it was going to happen. He set up in place that Christ was going to come. He told Eve that her seed, woman don't have a seed, is going to stomp the devil's head, right? But the choice he chooses, he operates based on our choice. When we make a wrong turn, God knew that, but God then makes sure that he we constantly see him so we can find our way back to him. That's a choice. And some people never find their way back there. So, so, so here's the benefit of grace, the, uh, the, the being adopted, the ability to be granted access. Let's turn to Hebrew for it. Did that make sense, Danny? It's yeah. choice. It's choice. Thank you. You're very, thank you for the question. Hebrews 4 and 16. Let's go to it real quick. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse. Here's what he says. Listen to this. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. The throne of God. We are the family of God. It was like when you were a kid, you wanted to talk to your mama. You, you said, mama, she didn't walk across the room to where you was. She said, you better come in here and sit down and talk to me. That's the throne. 
That's the, that's the power and authority of God. He said, I've given you access. So he says, come, come where you've gotten access, where God resides, all right? That you may obtain mercy, which is the love of God, and find access to God so that God can do what? Help you in the time of need. And what we've mistranslated is we pray and then God going to do it. And, and, and God's, God never said that. God never did that. Yeah, God, God, God gave them strength. We learned that uh, Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years. And that, that rock kept showing up. And God said, but Paul said that rock was Jesus Christ. <laughs> so guess what? God put Jesus in the wilderness. And Jesus was the rock. And when Moses was thirsty, Jesus provided the water. Right? That got the manna, God, he said, well, you got to pick up the bread. They said, manna, what is this? That's what manna mean. But God said, I'll rain down manna, but you got to pick it up. Yeah, God didn't have nobody picking up, no servants to come to pick it up for him and take it in the kitchen and all that stuff. So, so I can do the thing, but I need him to what? Give me strength and power. So when we come to that access place, as that, that, that the authority of God, the throne of God means authority. I have access to approach him. I should come what? Boldly. Why? Because we are believers. We believe. And we're trying to do it his way. We don't always get it right. But we, our intentions are right. Then he says, then you will find love and access to him to help us in the time of need. All right? So what is what is this what is this uh uh what what is this granted access? God says He will give grace, granted access to the humble, but res will resist those who are proud. Let's go to James. James is next chapter over from the book of Hebrews, James four and six. Here we go. Verse number six says Hebrew James four and six. But he giveth more access. He grants more access. Where if he says God resists the proud. Which means God does not give it access to people who are proud. But he does what? He gives access unto the humble. That's it. We have the opportunity to get the greater things from God. Because God says now that me and you are on the same page. God can speak to us through the preach word. That's why you got to go to church. And if it was easy, we'd go to church once a year, once every 10 years and never go back. We have to go to church every Sunday because if you got your ears open, I don't care how, whether you got 10 members, 100 members or 10,000, God is talking to everybody in there. If you're a believer, he's granted access to his word of revelation. And you say, whoa, that was Oh, that preacher was talking to me. That wasn't a preacher. You don't know. He don't even know you. You don't even know where you live. That was God who granted you access to, to receive the revelation, so that you can get the need that your needs are met. Right? God grant us access to His secret place. Let's go to this favorite psalm, the one we, the one we quote, and one 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 day we're gonna have to teach on this secret place. Because it sounds so good, it's like poetry, it's good to our ears, but what does it mean? Psalms 91, 1 and 2. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to get this revelation. Here we go. Here we go. Sister Michelle, we're getting ready to go in. Psalms 91, 1 and 2, and verse number 15 and 16. Here we go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Where is that? It's wrong. Where is that? The thoughts of God. That's the place that can't nobody go but God. Can't nobody go into God's mind. Can't nobody. Can't nobody find God. So we don't have to worry about them going into his mind. He said, he that, he that dwelleth in, who that hangs out, who stays in the thoughts of God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Which means God, there's no greater access than for God to be with you, is it? That's it. Watch verse two. I will seal the Lord. He is my refuge. And my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. What is David saying? What is the summer saying? Only way you can have access to God is trust him. And when you trust him, 
Proverbs 3, 5 says, acknowledge him and he'll what? Direct your path. We have to do the walking, but God creates the path. Why? Because we have access to him. We, we, we're under our tanza. We are under his shadow. That means we are, we have access. Right now, I see you on Zoom, but you're in Georgia. I don't have access to you. Right? But if I was in Georgia in that room you're in, I had access. We'd be sitting there, you know, drinking sweet tea together, right? So therefore, God says, if you, he that dwelleth in the thoughts of God, who he that has access to God gonna have access to God's thoughts, the way God thinks. He said, then then God with now we're under his shadow, right? We, we he's with us because he now has accepted us as his children. And as a father, he has to do what a good father would do. A good father would die for his children, wouldn't he? Isn't that what he did? He died for our sins. He could have let us die. But he died for our sin. Death is part of the purpose of God, but dying early is not. All right, let's go far. Verse number 15. Verse number 15 is where you, as Brother Malcolm Lewis said last week, is where you dropped the mic twice. Verse number 15. He shall call upon me, and I will what? Answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's grace. Grace. I have access to God. Right? That's grace. Now, now he's with me. Not God, God's glory. Right? God's glory. Right? God, God's glory can come to the earth, but God can't come to the earth in a, unless he come in a human form. He did that once. He, the only time he's doing it again is when Christ comes back, right? To redeem the whole planet. Verse number six. So he said, he will call, he, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. I will be with him in trouble. I, you see that on Ola? I will be with him in trouble. I will answer him. I will deliver him and honor him and give him what? Long life. That's grace. It's when God is with us. What is the power of grace? God's grace. First of all, when we have, we have when we have access to God, there's three things, and I'm gonna try to get through these so we can complete this lesson. First thing is, Paul said we have a sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. Let's go to Second Chronicle. I mean, Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Let's get this. He said, we, we, we have all sufficiency in all things. In other words, if you have access to God, if we in the land of lack, it's because we done threw it away. It, it, it ain't that God didn't give it to us. The average person, Pastor Weston, makes a million dollars in their lifetime. But when they, most people, when they retire, they ain't got a hundred, a thousand dollars unless they got a 401k. It ain't that he didn't give it to us because he promised that if we have grace access to him and he adopts us, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. Here we go. Y'all ready? And God is able to make all grace, all access abound toward you. God, God's, listen, 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 I'll tell you. God says he's willing to give us everything. Man, Pastor with, uh, Woods going to be teaching on promises here soon. He, there's 8,810 promises. There are 8,000. Patricia Miller, there's 8,810 promises in the Bible. Paul just said God is willing to give us all of it. He's willing to give us all because we have, we're part of his family. That ye always having all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. God is not trying to hold nothing back from nobody because God wants you to exceed, overachieve, right? Be the head and not the tail in everything you do because guess what? You're part of his family. That's why I don't care if it's 200 people graduating. Don't nobody stop pulling cameras out and clicking flashes until their child come across that stage. They may clap their hand, 
That was nice. Hey, Poochie, good to see you. That, that's the boy down the street that, you know, you eat at our house, right? You clap for Poochie. I'm, hey, look at his mom and wave at her. But when your child go across the stage, you lose your mind for, for, for as long as it takes, right? Because you're so proud of your child that they accomplished a major milestone. God is just like that. He wants us to overachieve. He wants us to, to, to be a super achiever. And he says that he'll make it a balance. All right, number two, we are enriched in everything by him and all utterance and all knowledge, even the testimony of Christ. We in 2 Corinthians, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's go to the fourth chapter. Fourth chapter, let's look at, I mean, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. And we're going to look at the verses four. All right, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Watch this Tina Diaz, verses number, I mean, number five. I'll change that. It says this, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the what? Power of God. How bid we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world. That means satanic forces, principalities that come to naught, come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world into, unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the hearts of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. All right. That, that's, wait a minute, I'm reading the wrong thing. First, I'm sorry. No, I read it right. First chapter. Was that in the first chapter? I'm in the second chapter. Didn't nobody stop me? All right, here we go. First Corinthians, the first chapter and the fourth verse. I knew that didn't sound right. Here we go. I thank the Lord always on your behalf for that the grace, the access to God, which is given you by Jesus. Now that makes sense. What did Jesus do? He tore down the wall of petition so that we have access to God. What is grace? Adoption, access to God. That in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance, in all knowledge, even in the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come behind in no, God said that you don't be behind in no gift. Mm -mm -mm. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We're part of the fellowship. We're part of the family. That, that's, that's what he's saying. And that he enriches us in how we talk and how our knowledge, all our intelligence, things that we get promoted and we get expansion. And it's because we have access to him. And when we have that access to him, then he enriches us. All right. Lastly, he allows us to labor abundantly. First Corinthians. Let's go to the 15th chapter. 15th chapter in the 10th verse. It's the last scripture and then we're going to call it a day for today. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. But by the grace of God, but by the adoption of God, but by God granting us access, I am what I am. Not what I used to be. See, once God gives us access to him, then we can say like the, the psalmist, oh, taste and see that he is good, right? And then, then the old church added, he gets sweeter and sweeter as the day go on. He says, and his grace, his access, his adopting us, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. In other words, the access, God was with me. That's what he's saying. God was with me. God gave me access and I have access to God, right? And wherever you go, Tina did, that means the glory of God is with you. And if you have been called for a special assignment, that glory becomes the anointing. 
you become anointed to do assignment for God, which means the anointing is God smearing himself on us so that wherever we go, God is with us. And even though we make we, we make wrong turns, what what it, God purpose got to be fulfilled, that anointing destroys that yoke so that we can fulfill the purpose of God. All right. So 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 here's what Paul did. Paul grasped a very powerful spiritual secret and the truth that, that when he came into the full realization and full conclusion that all the successes in his life was a result of God's adoption. That's grace, which granted him access to our Heavenly Father. And that's why of all the apostles, nobody, Artanza, saw the revelation that Paul saw. Nobody wrote as many letters or we call books as Paul because Paul understood that he needed to get, they, they preached Jesus so they walked with him. Paul never walked with him. But Paul discovered this mystery, this secret that I must have, I must be, we must be adopted, called grace, adopted into his family, right? And when we're adopted into his family, we have access to him. And, and what we need to do is since we got that access, we need to go to him and make sure we understand his thoughts. And then when we line our thoughts up with his thoughts, that's called prayer, then the power of God is released. What we were taught was, you don't deserve this favor. That's what we were taught. It's not deserve favor. And then we were taught, well, you know, uh, the Lord would do it. The Lord would do it. He'll, he'll, he'll do it. I hear people saying that, oh, the Lord would do it. The, the, the Lord will do it. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the house. They ain't going to take your house. The Lord going to do it. Uh, you don't even have a relationship with him like that. So if you don't have a relationship like that, uh, that, that, that letter they put on the outside of the door that says foreclosure in 30 days, that's for real. But if you have access, even if, watch this, watch this. This is a beautiful thing. Even if you lose something, when you have access to God and you adopt his family, you lose it because he wanted to give you something better. Anything you lost because you're part of his family, he intended for you to lose it so that he could give you something better. All right? Yeah. I, I would still be down in Covenant, Tennessee. I left there 40 years ago. The population was 8,000 8, people. My daughters live there. I, I go down there 40 years later, and guess what? It's still 8,000 people. All right? You can read between the lines, right? Now, what if I had just not heard that voice that kept wouldn't let me sleep saying, I, I need you to leave? I'm like, I ain't, I ain't, I got pastoring two churches. I'm running 16 revivals. I'm making, back 40 years ago, I was making $40,000 a year. I'm like, this is too much money. I ain't leaving this, but I couldn't rest. And guess what? Me leaving Covenant, Tennessee was all in the will of God because since that time, God has elevated me. I've been all over the world. What if I had not listened? What if I not hadn't went to realize I was in part of his family and just trusted my own wisdom? I'd be sitting down in Covenant, Tennessee, and there would be 8,001 people, persons there. And I'll be the number one, 8,001. I'll be the, the one off the 8,000. So Paul is saying, you don't have to, that's what Denny's question was so good. You don't have to worry about using your wisdom Realize that you are, if you believe you are adopted, grace is adoption. Grace is God. That's why I said it's, it's true, but it's not truth. It's undeserved favor, which means we don't deserve to be adopted, but grace don't mean undeserved favor. It means we are adopted and have access to God. You don't have to go to nobody and get nobody to pray for you. You can have access to talk to him for yourself. And if you have that type of relationship to be bold, he said, come boldly. He said, then he will give you power to help you in times of need. And then you take the power and you meet the need. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's still a point. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, like as, uh, as a Christian, you know, because <clears throat> many of us, when we accept the Christ as our savior and we, we did it with all sincerity in, in our heart. And, you know, and we, we, we feel just like, I think it was, it was, uh, minister Weston who thought all those years that he was a Christian, but he felt 
later on that he really was not. Um, <coughs> uh, things was revealed to his spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, like as a Christian, suppose even because I can't remember who it was in the Bible who said the Lord who said God increase my faith, my belief, my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Okay, even as a Christian, when we 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 still trying to do what we feel is right and uh for doing uh God's word, doing following God's work. <coughs> Suppose we don't reach the sainthood, does that mean that we lost our grace? We don't have that grace, or we not adopted? Well, see, we lost it, our adoption. No, no, it, it doesn't mean that. But what it, what it mean, does mean is this: He says, "Where sin, where hardship abound, the access to God means that He'll give you more access." So some people say, "Who eat that person? They got favor all over their life." You know why? They have greater access. Mm -hmm. So it's not that God won't take care of us, but some things He won't do. See, a lot of, I, and I said this, and I, I, I told you about the story how I pastored for 15 years, and, and for 15 years, I just preached what I heard as a boy. I didn't know. Yeah. That, to be honest with you, I was reading the Bible, what I was, sure wasn't studying, because I just believed that what they said was true. Only to find out, one day I made the mistake of saying, God, I want, to, I want you to reveal to me the revelation of your word. And when I looked at the Bible, and it didn't, wasn't immediately, about five months later, I looked at the Bible and looked like words was moving on the page. I'm like, what, in, how am I, what is going on here? Then I realized, oh my God, I was quoting scriptures that wasn't in the Bible because they made them up. And I was saying things that God never said. And so I made it my business to start studying, right? And then the revelation of God came. So the, the mo And then I had to go through my stuff. But guess what? The greater the stuff, the greater the access. The greater the access, the greater the power. So what happens to us is, the, and the purpose of Bible study ought to be to open up our eyes to see what's missing so that we can do what? Get in line. Mm -hmm. And then once we get in line, God, God is going to be good to us. And a lot of people are bragging about the favor of God. It ain't number God's goodness. That means God, that same goodness is all up and down your street. And when you go to church on Sunday morning, them cars... Got ice on them when you come, and when you, if you drew a, a yellow line beside the tire like they do downtown when you're parking, you come back, that car ain't even moved. But they taking vacation trips and living large, and they looking at you like them people over there all do, the church do is take their money. That is not true. But what is true is we're going to church but don't understand what the Bible is saying. And that ain't all our fault because we're supposed to study. It doesn't, don't say pastor study to show yourself approved. We should be studying. But, you know, I've been there. I've been there working all week. You know, it's Saturday evening. I better get in there and get in there and get this word together. How are you going to get a word together on Saturday evening? That's a revelation. What you're going to do is you're going in there, you're going to be a motivational speaker and get the people all hyped up. And they're going to feel good and walk out ignorant. And then guess what? When they, when they go out in the world, they don't know nothing. They don't know nothing. They don't know because it takes study to know what these words mean. You can't use a, a Hebrew Bible and then be quoting English definitions. <laughs> These people were not white people, black people. They were Hebrews. They were Arab. They spoke Aramaic. They didn't speak Greek. The Greek, the Jews wrote the first Kona, used, wrote the first Greek Bible. That was Jews that did that. But yet now we've been being taught the Greek word for this. Well, the Greek has got a different context. You better be looking up Hebrew words and Aramaic words and then all of a sudden Grace ain't undeserved favor. Grace is adoption. It's access to God. God gave me access. You mean I got to go to my pastor and say, will you pray for me on this job? No, I can just go to God and say, God, I believe that you got me. Because your word said, if I paid my tithes and offers, that you would open up the witness of heaven and pour me out a blessing. And right now, I believe this blessing is in front of me. And you promised me three things you were going to do for me. That my season would happen on time, that the devil couldn't destroy, destroy what I build, and that you would protect me, you see? But if you don't know that, and anybody taught you that, just bring your tithes and offering, because you trust God. Is that why you do it? it got to be more to it. So we have not been properly, uh, and that, so we got young pastors like Pastor Christopher Weston and some other ones that I know, some of my sons and some of my friends' sons, who are digging in and trying to get this revelation so that we can walk in the power of God. Mm -hmm. Not just the preacher, pastor, living large. Everybody in that church ought to be what? Living large. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Because the pastor's responsibility is to teach. I'm talking to pastors right here on this Zoom, on this Facebook. They ain't on Zoom. Because you can't live large and your members are poor. It, it's something wrong with that. They may be poor because they throw they may be poor because they throw their money away, but they should not be poor because you ain't taught them. You see what I'm saying? And that's not my pastors, that's Sunday school teachers and everybody else who pick up the Bible and, and, and attempt to rightly divide it. We need to know tonight that grace is we are adopted into the family. We need to know that we have access to God. We need to know that when we have access to God and do it God's way, God puts power on us. Power to do what? To be enriched. To have sufficiency in all things. That's what he just said, isn't it? So, Bishop, can I ask you a question? Yes. When, so when he instructs us to go to the elders of the church, then why do we have to go to them if we have access? Why do he instruct us to go to the elders of the church Be if we have access? Because God don't work. God, God, God put people here. It's like why don't why I go to church and listen to a preacher? Why don't just God just lay in the bed and let God's thoughts? Because God is a spirit, right? His glory will come, but he put designated people. And what he really wants is all of us to be walking in that authority. The Bible says this, Sister Michelle, that the earth groaneth, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. God just waiting for us to get the word rightly divided and realize who we are so he can use us, right? See, he has to use people because he he can't come here unless he comes in flesh. And he only did that once and he ain't doing it again until he comes back. But when he comes back, the book of Revelation is to take the whole world from the devil and bring the kingdom, his kingdom back, restore paradise. So he has people, preachers. Elders are either leaders of the church who, who are part of his family, who believe, right, who have access to God, or as they say in the old church, know how to get a prayer through. You know, people like that, they know how that, how do they know how to get a prayer? They have access to God. Is that limited to them? No, it's not. It's available to what? All of us. But we've been taught, Sister Michelle, and I know that's the base of your question. Won't he do it? The question is, he's already done it. What's the problem? We didn't know it. So we look to a man to do it. And guess what? Any man to do it because he got a title. And then that man falls into some kind of bad situation, we lose trust in the man. Now we're all confused. The trust should never be in a man. It should be the God of the man. And if the man ain't talking about what the Bible says, then he ain't a God's man. Did that make sense, Michelle? Yes, it did. Yeah. But he, but he, he said, if any of you sick, call. That means you have to call. Because I shouldn't know your business unless you tell me, right? If I showed up to your house and said, oh, oh by the way, he said, hey, Bishop Paul, what you doing? I, I came here because I wanted, I know that you're going through. The first thing you'll say, well, how do you know I'm going through? Now, I would be concerned, but that means that pastor is a busybody and a gossiper. Because <laughs> don't nobody supposed to know what you're going through but God, right? You may tell your immediate family. So he said, any uh, who are sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church that they anoint you with oil and pray for you and the prayer of faith. Guess what? Now God's what? The prayer of faith means that person should have access to God. And when they have access to God, the power of God is released on them. And when they pray, guess what? That man shall be healed. And if he has any sin, the sin shall be forgiven. You see how that works? It's not the man. It's not the elder. It's the elder that have access to God. Not, not perfect, but just trust God and believe God. To this point, if you're in a restaurant and they say every Christian in here, raise your hand. If you raise your hand, you're going to die. Would you raise your hand? Don't answer that. Well, I can't, you can't, I don't want one person to answer because the rest of y'all got the stuff a lot. Because see, some people say, well, I'm going to run. Some people say, I'm going to hide under the table. Some people say, I'm just going to sit there and not say nothing. Can you believe that he is able to do, and he's done this, that a man, com man comes in with a gun to shoot somebody and pulls the trigger, but the trigger wouldn't go off, but the gun wouldn't go off. What was that? Was that an accident? I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, God. That's the power of God. You got oh, it. Oh, that's power. That's the power of God. That means that person has access to God and a purpose. And God said, God will not let you die until your purpose is done. Then let you do some foolish, like drive 100 miles an hour and 15 miles on with a bunch of uh, lightning poles going down the street. You lose control of your car and hit a pole and die. That is not the will of God. 
that's a bad choice, speeding when you're in a 15 mile zone. So that that's 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 why the Lord provoked me to teach on this because we have been taught that He'll do it, and we don't realize He adopted us to have access to Him, so that we can He can release His power on us, so that we do it. And when we start behaving like that, then people in our families and our they're going to they're get saved. But talking about how good God is, and He is fulfilled the purpose. You need to say, I'm a, I'm a saint, right? A saint has access to God. A Christian is a religion. Muslim, Christian, right? Buddha, those are all religions. But a saint represents a son of God, a child of God, all right? I don't went over the time zone. Y'all still here. A few, I think I lost maybe two people. But anyway, I hope that this was a blessing to those of you who are here tonight. I pray that God... Gave you a revelation. I'm going to send these notes out. And when you get this email. Yeah, please, please add me on the list to get the notes, please. You, you should, well, text me your email. I think I, I've been sending them to you. I think I got your email address, Tan. But, okay. But, but, uh, but please, if you, if you get, when you get these notes, if you have questions, just email me back and say, I got a question. And I will more happy, I will very happily respond to you. And if you're really confused, I'll take some time with you, all right? Because it's so important that we get this. All right? Well, thank you all so much for coming. All right. Yeah. To, to God be the glory. Pastor Woods, are you here tonight? I saw Kathy. Kathy? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Is that Pastor Woods? That Pastor Woods. Is that me? Mm -hmm. I'm hearing my own voice echo. Oh, Pastor Woods? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Would you give us prayer, closing prayer and benediction? Yes. Praise the Lord, everybody. For he is good and his mercy endures forever. Prayer. Christian Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God, for our <coughs> life, our help, and our strength. We thank you, God, because our bishop is the epitome of what Second Timothy, the second chapter and 15th verse says, to study it and show thyself a fool <coughs> that needeth not be ashamed. God, we just Thank you so much for him. We thank you, God, for the lesson that went up on tonight so that we know what the power of grace is, so that we have the new definition of grace, God, so we know that there's access for us because of grace. God, that we know now that there's sufficiency, there's enrichment, and there's an abundant labor. God, we ask you now to just let that resonate with us. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but let us express that word in our daily life. God, we ask right now that you bless all those families that are represented here tonight. <coughs> Increase this number, God. I know the bishop has a goal for 100 by December. We know that you're going to do that and go beyond. We ask right now that you will continue to give us your grace and your knowledge. Keep us in all your care. We ask it all in the power and authority of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now unto him that loved us and has washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests before God and his Father. Unto him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 God bless all. God's blessing to all of you. Have a wonderful day.